Okay, we're back. That was fun. Froze up on me very, very quickly there. So I was talking about uh, putting uh, the jigsaw puzzle, okay? So I said what you know you could do is what you typically would do is you'd first dump out all the pieces, open up the box, dump out all the pieces. Typically, uh, you'd probably put all of them face up so that you can see the picture. I would typically put you know all the corners and all the edges together and then put the, the, the light colors together and try to try to do it that way. You don't have to do that. I mean, you could do this. You could find the bottom uh, left-hand corner piece, and then you can find the piece right next to that, the piece right next to that, next to that, all the way down, and just look for each piece and work your way across, work your way across, work your way across. And you can do it that way all the way till you get to the upper right-hand corner piece. Now, that's you might think, why would you do that? Well, I mean, you could, but it's not the most efficient way, probably. Okay. So what I'm getting at is this: when we're doing trig identities, whatever the heck those are, it's there's more than one way you can do these, okay? There's not a right way of doing them. There's, there's typically several right ways of doing these, okay? So what I like to, like to look for, though, is the most efficient way. So I'm going to give you ways of doing these trig identities, but there might be other ways that you can do them also, okay? And I'm going to try to give us, I would encourage you to make a little cheat sheet where you can put down uh, different strategies and different statements that will help you work through these trig identities, okay? So, I mean, but what is a trig identity, okay? What a trig identity is, if you look at the worksheet 3-3, every single one of these problems, numbers 19 through whatever I said, 90 or whatever, those are true statements, okay? They are true statements. If you were looking at question 19, 19 says cosecant of theta times cosine of theta equals cotangent of theta, okay? That's a true statement, okay? I'm not asking is it true or false. That is a true statement. You need to prove it, okay? You need to prove that it is a true statement, okay? Now, if you remember ge geometry proofs, it's, not, it's totally different than those types of proofs, okay? So you need to show that that is a true statement. So you have to show your work. Every year I have a, a handful of students that just, they hate showing their work. They hate it, okay? And sometimes they can get away with it in, in math classes. They can actually, you know, solve a lot of problems without it, do it in their head. You can't do these in your head, okay? The work, showing your work is the, is the solution, okay? If you can't just show, say you know, did it in your head. It's, we know these are true statements. You have to show why it's a true statement. That's why I typically would have students come up to the board on, on week number three to show me how they got these solutions, okay? So anyhow, before we actually start question number 19, I'm going to start a little cheat sheet uh, that you might want to jot these on either the back of your unit circle or on uh, just a separate sheet of paper that you can refer to quite often, okay? And we're going to keep adding to this. As we get further and further into this, there's going to be different strategies that we're going to use. Some of them we're going to use right away, some we're not going to use for a while. So let me start writing on the board some of these strategies and some of these notes, okay? And a lot of these you should, all, I mean, you better already know, okay? Uh, we know that tangent is sine over cosine. It is opposite over adjacent. We really don't care, okay? But we just want tangent sine over cosine. We know that cotangent is cosine over sine. We know that secant is 1 over cosine. And we know that cosecant is 1 over sine. Okay? Um, also, we learned that sine squared, these should all have thetas on them, but I'm leaving those off. I mean, you really should have them, but it's not necessary. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay? Now, if you remember when I taught you this, I also taught you there's two other ones that I have not memorized, but I know how to come up with them. If I divide each of these by sine squared, by sine squared, by sine squared, by sine squared. If we do that, sine squared over sine squared is one. Cosine over sine is cotangent, so cotangent squared. And one over sine is cosecant, so one over sine squared is cosecant squared, okay? And then instead of dividing everything by sine squared, if I divide everything by cosine squared, well, sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by itself is 1, and 1 over cosine is secant. So 1 over cosine squared is secant squared, okay? So as long as I have this one memorized, I can come up with these other two from that one, okay? So uh, those are all we're going to use for right now, okay? These are just, these are, these are trig identities right here, okay? Now we're going to use these to solve or to uh, prove more difficult trig identities, okay? So we're going to just start working through these, and every now and then I'm going to add to my cheat sheet different strategies, okay, different strategies on how we're going to approach these, okay? So we look at question number 19. Question 19. Number 19 says, okay, cosecant times cosine equals 
bowls was tangent? Uh, cotangent. Cotangent. Now, here's the deal. I've taught you since, you know, the very first time I ever had any of you in class, or Mrs. Thomas, uh, she taught you, that on equations, whatever you do to one side, do the other. Okay, we've been doing that forever. You know, if you add one to one side, you add one to the other. Subtract five to one side, subtract five to the other, okay? With trig identities, okay, you're not allowed to do that. And what I mean is this. You can't make, you don't just make these two sides look the same. You're only allowed to change one side. You're only allowed to change one side. You can either change, make the left side look like the right side or the right side look like the left side, okay? And it doesn't matter, but it's easier if you take the more complicated side and make it look like the simpler side, almost always. I, can't, I honestly can't think of a situation where you'd want to start with the simpler side and want to make it a more complicated side, okay? So the first note I'm going to put over here is uh, change the complicated side to look like the simple side. Okay, we're going to change the complicated side to look like the simple side, okay? So when I look at this, I have my left side and my right side, I would hope that you understand that this is the more complicated side because there's more stuff there. Whatever has more stuff is typically the more complicated side, okay? So we're gonna change this side. So I'm gonna change this. I cannot ever touch cotangent. That's gotta say cotangent the entire time, okay? You're never allowed to change cotangent at all. So for cosecant, well cosecant I know is one over sine. One over sine times cosine. So what I just did here was I changed everything into sines and cosines. Why do we change things to sines and cosines? That's easier. That's the easiest ones. Those are the ones we like to work with the most, okay? So the next thing we want to do is, not always, but quite often, change everything to sine and cosine. Again, we're not necessarily always going to do that, okay? But that is something that you can do. So does that help? Equals cotangent. Well, I'm going to make cosine over 1. When we times fractions, we don't need a common denominator, okay? We just times the tops. 1 times cosine is cosine. Sine times 1 is sine. It's cotangent. And what is cosine over sine? Cosine over sine is cotangent. So cotangent equals cotangent. And we're done. What did I do to the right side? Nothing. What did I do with the left side? I turned it into the right side, okay? We proved that. So that's our first trig identity. Now, if you're sitting there going, that wasn't too bad, okay, good. It's going to get tougher, okay? That's definitely going to get tougher. Okay, now, I don't like the way they set this up. Number 21, we are eventually going to come back to it. I, I just, I don't want to start with the very second, the second question being number 21. We'll eventually come back and hit number 21, okay? So just, I'd put down number 21, I'd write it down, leave about three lines of space, and then uh, go on to number 25, or 23. Okay, so we'll eventually hit 21. So 23, we have cosine... And again, I'm leaving all these thetas off. Tangent plus cotangent equals what? Uh, cosecant. Okay, so we're going to change the left side. It's more complicated. It's obviously more complicated. There's a whole lot more stuff over here than over here, okay? Now, something we could do, and we've only talked about one thing, change everything to sines and cosines, and, and we can do that, and, and we're going to do that. Something else we could have done, though, think back to algebra. What do we typically do when we have something sitting next to parentheses? We distribute. So we could distribute. So I'm going to put that down. Now, so what are we going to do? Are we going to distrib distribute? Are we going to distribute or are we going to make everything sines and cosines? Well, we're going to do both. And it really doesn't matter which one we do first. It really doesn't. Okay? I'll make everything sines and cosines. Okay? So this side, this already is cosine. Tangent, well, tangent is sine over cosine plus cotangent. Well, cotangent is cosine over sine. Okay. Now, we could distribute now if we want. We could do that. Or what I'm going to do, though, is this, okay? When I add these fractions, when you add fractions, you need a common denominator, okay? Well, denominators are cosine and sine. Well, if you remember, if you want to get a common denominator, you simply times them together. If your denominators are 2 and 5, common denominator is 2 times 5, 10, okay? So, if our denominators are cosine and sine, our common denominator is cosine times sine, which is cosine sine, or sine cosine, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna write sine cosine, it really doesn't matter though. So I'm drawing two fraction bars with sine cosine on bottom. So, we'll, we'll deal with this cosine over here eventually, don't worry about it right now. 
What do I do to a cosine, make it a sine cosine? Well, we times it by sine. So we times the top by sine. Sine times sine is sine squared. How do I turn a sine into a sine cosine? Well, we times by cosine. So we times the top by cosine, we get cosine squared. Okay, now that we have a common denominator, we can add these together. So we have cosine, so sine squared plus cosine squared over sine cosine. I just put it all over one denominator, okay? Now, what is sine squared plus cosine squared? That's one. So we have cosine times, this is all one, over sine cosine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and distribute, okay? So I'm gonna make this cosine over one. We times our tops, cosine times one is cosine, over one times sine cosine is sine cosine. Almost there, okay? Now, I have a cosine on top and a cosine on bottom. I can cross them off. Now, be careful. You might be saying, well, we're left with sine over here. No, we're not. We're left with sine on bottom. So we have 1 over sine equals cosecant. And what is cosecant? Where is it? 1 over sine. So cosecant equals cosecant. You literally have to, you're not done until the left side looks exactly like the right side. If you stopped right here, you wouldn't get full credit. This doesn't look like that. These look exactly the same. Okay, that was a little bit tougher one. Okay, a little bit tougher. Don't get even tougher yet though, sorry. Let's look at number 25, 25. We have tangent, cotangent, minus cosine squared equals sine squared. Okay, so if you're wondering what are those u's? It's just something else that represents an angle, okay? Instead of thetas, they're using u's, okay? so. We could make everything sines and cosines. What the heck, let's do that, why not, okay? Tangent, if we look over here, is sine over cosine times cotangent is cosine over sine minus cosine squared. And I'm changing the left side because it's obviously a little more complicated than the right side, okay? Well, these cancel and these cancel. Now you might be saying, well, everything's gone. No, when it cancels, it turns into one, okay? So one minus cosine squared sine squared. Well, I see some squares here. I see sine squares and cosine squares. Well, I'm going to use this one right here. Well, if I, ha if I have sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, so what is cosine squared? Okay, what is cosine squared? Well, I'm going to put this over here. Cosine squared, well, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So cosine squared, if I want to solve for that, it's frac sine squared. So cosine squared equals one minus sine squared, okay? Think about it this way, okay? If, say this is Steve and this is Chuck, it's that sine cosine. Steve's money plus Chuck's money adds up to a dollar. Take Steve's money, add on Chuck's money, together they have a dollar. So how much money does Chuck have? That should be squared there. Chuck has a dollar minus Steve's. And how much does Steve have? A dollar minus Chuck, okay? So cosine squared is one minus sine squared. So one minus, Cosine squared is one minus sine squared. Okay, that's how much money Chuck has is a dollar minus Steve. Distribute the negative sign. So one turns into negative one. Negative sine squared turns into positive sine squared. One minus one, those cancel, so you're left with sine squared equals sine squared. And again, I never touch the right hand side. That's not KO's rule, okay? Any trig class will tell you to Proven identity, you have to leave one side alone. You're not allowed to change the one side. Okay, one side you can change, the other side you can't. Okay? 27. Don't get overloaded on these, okay? If you start going, I'm getting lost right here, I would stop. Take a break, maybe back up and watch the video again. Okay? 27. This one will be a little bit easier one, okay? Secant minus one, secant plus one. So I'm going to change the left-hand side. I'll think back to algebra and algebra 2. When we have two terms times two terms, what do we do? One word. Foil. We can foil this thing out. Okay? So our first term, secant times secant, is secant squared. My outers, secant times 1, is secant. My inners, negative 1 times secant, is negative secant. My last, negative 1 times positive 1, is negative 1. 
right? Well, secant and negative secant, those cancel. So left with secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared. Well, I see squares here again. I'm not going to use this one, though, because these have sines and cosines, okay? And I wouldn't want to change things in the sines and cosines because on this side, we don't have sine or cosine, okay? We have tangent. But when I look here, I know that secant squared is tangent squared plus 1. So where I see a secant squared, I put tangent squared plus 1, and we have the minus 1, the tangent squared. The 1 and the minus 1 cancel, we're left with tangent squared equals tangent squared. And that one's done. Okay, and then we look at number 29, number 29. Secant plus tangent, secant minus tangent. Equals one, okay? This is almost identical to the one we just did. It really is. We're going to FOIL. Secant times secant is secant squared. My outer secant times negative tangent is a negative secant tangent. My inner tangent times secant is positive. You could say tangent secant or secant tangent. It doesn't matter because multiplication is commutative. It doesn't matter the order you multiply in. And my last, tangent times negative tangent is negative tangent squared equals 1. Well, the secant tangent and the negative secant tangent cancel, so we'll have the secant squared minus tangent squared equals 1. Now, we're still going to use this one right here. Secant squared, we said, was tangent squared plus 1. So tangent squared plus 1 minus tangent squared. Well, the tangent squared and the negative tangent squared cancel, we'll have with 1 equals 1. That was almost the same as one we just did a second ago. 31. Cosine squared, 1 plus tangent squared. Equals 1. Now, you could make everything sines and cosines. You could do that, okay? But I know this right here. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. So I'm going to do this. Cosine squared times secant squared equals 1. Okay? And what is secant? 1 over cosine. So secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. Okay? And we multiply, make that over 1. Cosine squared times 1 is cosine squared. 1 times cosine squared is cosine squared. What is anything divided by itself? 1. 1 equals 1. Okay? 33. You guys hating these yet? Ah, they get fun. 33. Sine plus cosine squared plus, this one looks like a tougher one. It's not that bad, it really isn't. Uh, plus cosine minus cosine squared equals, uh, where are we at? There's two. Okay. This one's going to take a little bit of writing, but it's not that bad. Okay. Here's what you don't do. Don't do. Students will go, well, sine plus cosine squared is sine squared plus cosine squared. They just yeah, you distribute the square. That's that's not that's not what you do. Okay, if the two was right here, you distribute the two. But we have a square here. No, 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 no. It's not just squaring both of them. That doesn't work. Here's why: when you square something, you times by itself. So it'd be sine plus cosine times itself. Sine plus cosine plus do the same thing here. Sine minus cosine times itself. Sine minus cosine. We're obviously changing the left side because it's a lot more complicated. If we FOIL this out, we're going to get first is sine times sine and sine squared. I'm going to skip a step here, okay? Outers are sine times cosine. That's sine cosine. My inners is also a sine cosine. So a sine cosine and another sine cosine is two sine cosines. Two sine cosines plus my last cosine times cosine is cosine squared. We FOIL over here. Sine times sine is sine squared. My outer sine times negative cosine is a negative sine cosine. My inners are also a negative sine cosine. A negative sine cosine and another negative sine cosine is negative two sine cosines. And then my last, a negative cosine times a negative cosine is a positive cosine squared. Okay? Negative times negative is positive. Now that's a mess there, but it's going to turn out nice really, really quick. Two sine cosines and negative two sine cosines, those cancel. And what is sine squared plus cosine squared? One. What's sine squared plus cosine squared? One. And again, don't stop there. You're almost done. 
Don't leave it like that. One plus one is two. The last line should say two equals two. Okay, I check my screen. Just went to sleep here. Make sure we're still taping it. Hope we are. Yes, we are. Okay, 35. 35, we have secant four minus secant squared. Equal tangent four. And plus tangent squared. Okay. It, it doesn't matter which side we change. I'm going to change the left. Okay, I think the left side is a little more complicated. I don't know. They're, they're both kind of kind of messy. Okay, what we could do is this. We might see a secant to the fourth. I mean, well, we got nothing with secant to the fourth, okay? We have some squares, but not to the fourth. Well, what we could do is this. I see secant four and I see secant squared. We could factor, if possible. We could factor. We could factor out a secant squared. Secant squared times secant squared is secant to the fourth minus secant squared times one is secant squared. Now we have some secant squareds, and we have something with secant squared. Secant squared is tangent squared plus one. I want to change these secant squareds into some tangent squareds, and we want that because we want to end up with tangents on this side, okay? So wherever I see a secant squared, I'm going to put a tangent squared plus one. So here's a secant squared. I have tangent squared plus one times, this right here is going to be tangent squared plus one minus one, okay? I change secant squared to tangent squared plus one, I change the secant squared to tangent squared plus one, then we still have a minus one. These cancel. So we have tangent squared plus one times tangent squared. And then if I distribute tangent squared times tangent squared is tangent to the fourth, tangent squared times one is tangent squared. I don't have a problem doing what I just did right there. Instead of writing the right-hand side every time, you just want to draw an arrow to it. That's fine. Okay. You have enough writing you have to do on these as it is. Okay. As long as you don't change this side, you don't have to write it every single time if you don't want to. Okay. Okay. 37. We're probably going to do the front of this worksheet, probably go as far as question number 55, and then uh, that will be it from this video, is what I'm guessing. We'll, we'll see how much longer this takes. 37. We have secant minus tangent. Equals cosine over one plus sine. Okay. Um, we could argue on which side's more messy, which is more complicated. You might say this has more junk on it, so it's more complicated, but you might uh, think this is messier because we don't like secants and tangents, okay? So, you know, we could argue either way, okay? And I'll be honest, sometimes I may not pick the most efficient way. There's some of these that get really complicated that. You know, there'll be times I'll have to step, step back and just look at it and go, man, I'm stuck, and ask for uh, uh, suggestions, okay? I am going to change this side, though, okay? Now, we can't use any of these now because, as of right now, because there's no squares in it, okay? But I am going to change my secant into tangents into sines and cosines because that's what we want is sines and cosines. Secant is 1 over cosine minus tangent is sine over cosine equals that, Okay. Now we have a common denominator, which is nice, so I can write it as one fraction, one minus sine over cosine. So it's getting closer, but it ain't quite there, okay? Now, here's something we have not talked about yet, okay? It, basically, we've done everything we can. We, we've changed, we're, we're changing the complicated side, we made everything sine and cosines, we can't distribute, we can't FOIL, we can't factor, we can't do anything yet. We're, we're kind of stuck right now, okay? So here's another thing that you can do. Okay, is you can multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the top or bottom. If you remember conjugate from algebra 2, that's kind of like the opposite, but not exactly, okay? For example, if I gave you uh, 3 plus 4x, the opposite, let's say it was negative 3 plus 4x. The opposite of negative 3 plus 4x is positive 3 minus 4x. The opposite, you change everything. You change everything, okay? The conjugate of negative 3 plus 4x would be negative 3 minus 4x. The conjugate, the only thing you change is the symbol in between them, okay? So, what I'm getting at is this. We have 1 minus sine. The conjugate of 1 minus sine is 1 plus sine. So we're going to times the top and bottom by 1 plus sine. Now, if we step back. And think about it. Does that look like a good idea? Don't say yes because the teacher says so. 
We want to end up with cosine over 1 plus sine. We want to have a 1 plus sine there. Now, we don't want to have a 1 plus sine on top, but that's okay. We'll eventually deal with that, but we want to have that there, okay? So, let's times this. And if you remember, something else I taught you in Algebra 2 is this. These are conjugates. We've already done a couple problems like this today. When you FOIL conjugates, you don't have to do all the FOIL. You just have to do your first and your last because your outers and inners will cancel, okay? If you want to do all the FOIL, you can, but it's not necessary. These are conjugates, which is our first, 1 times 1 is 1, and our last sine times negative sine is negative sine squared. Now, do not distribute this. Don't distribute that. We don't want to touch this 1 plus sine. We want that to stay there. So leave it as cosine 1 plus sine. Okay? Now, what is 1 minus sine squared? I think I just erased it there. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So if I want to solve this, for, for, for example, cosine squared. Subtract sine squared from each side. Cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. Again, the example I used was this. If Steve and Chuck have a dollar, how much money does, what's 1 minus Steve? Chuck. And we spell Chuck cosine squared. Over cosine, 1 plus sine. Almost there. This is cosine to the first, by the way. If I asked you to simplify x to the 8th over x to the 3rd, if you remember, you'd say x to the 5th. There are more x's on top. How many more? 5 more on top. Do that with cosines. Where are there more cosines? On top. There's 2 here, there's 1 here, there's 1 more on top. So cross this off and cross off all but one of those. So we're left with just 1 cosine over 1 plus sine, which is what we wanted. That was a tougher one, okay? And we're going to do that every now and then, times the top and the bottom of the conjugate of the top or the bottom. Okay, that will pop up several times on this worksheet. Okay. Again, you do not need to do all this. Assi uh, this assignment is going to be at least a week and a half. Okay, that uh, before we do at least a week and a half. Probably more like two, two and a half weeks at least. I'm guessing. Thirty-nine. Three sine squared plus four cosine squared. Three sine squared plus four cosine squared equals three plus cosine squared. Okay, three plus cosine squared. Okay, uh, there are different ways you could do this one. Here's what I'm going to do, okay? Uh, I've actually, students in the past have taught me other ways of doing this one, and actually it's a, maybe a step quicker, but I don't want to make it, it's a little more complicated, but it's a step quicker. I'm going to do it a little bit longer way but that might be a little easier to understand. I'm going to change this side, and I want to change, I want to have cosine squared, because I've got a cosine squared, so I want to change this, sine squared, into some form of cosine squared. Well, how much money does Steve have? A dollar, take away Chuck. Okay, Steve has a dollar, if Steve and Chuck have a dollar, Steve has a dollar, take away Chuck. Okay. Distribute, three times one is three. Three times negative cosine is negative three cosine squared, four cosine squared. And a negative three cosine squared and a positive four cosine squared is one cosine squared. And that's what we wanted. That was the longer way, which wasn't long at all, okay? We just changed everything to cosine squareds and then distributed. 41, one minus Cosine squared over 1 plus sine equals sine. Okay, I'm going to change the left-hand side here. Okay, uh, I'm going to do this. Cosine squared. Well, cosine squared. How much money does Chuck have? Chuck has a dollar take away Steve. So 1 minus, 1 minus sine squared over 1 plus sine. Okay, so I can factor this. I'd say difference of squares. Okay, we could factor. One is a square, like difference of squares, in case you forgot it, x squared minus uh, 25. That's a different subtraction of two squares. That's x squared and 5 squared. So that factors to x plus 5, x minus 5. Okay, this is 1 squared and this is sine squared. So that factors to 1 plus sine times 1 minus sine over 1 plus sine. OK? 
right? Now, some students think, well, can't we do what we did back here where I crossed off a cosine and a cosine and left just one cosine here? Why can't I just say there's, oh wait, that's one, that's one minus. No, forget that. Strike that, okay? Doesn't work anyhow. Now, we can cross these off, though. So we're left with one minus, one minus sine. Distribute the negative sign, we'll have one minus one plus sine. One minus one cancel, sine equals sine. Okay? 43. Okay. 43. Okay. <laughs> Something else that's new. This one's a nice one, though. Okay, something we've not talked about. One minus tangent, cotangent plus one, cotangent minus one. Okay, it doesn't matter which side we change. Okay, the left or the right, and it really doesn't matter on this. Okay, what we could do is this. Okay, and I'm going to use some terminology I've, not, I've never used before. Okay, in any of my math classes up until FST. Okay, if the skeleton of each side looks the same. What I mean, what the heck do you mean by skeleton, okay? What I'm saying here is this. This kind of looks like this. The skeleton looks the same because we have one, two, three, four terms, one, two, three, four terms, two on top, two on bottom, two on top, two on bottom, plus, minus, plus, minus. They, they, they generally look pretty darn close, the skeleton of them, okay? So here's what we would do is this. If the skeletons are the same, Divide everything by one, one of the terms, by one of the terms, okay? So what I'm getting at is this. Let's look at tangent right here. Well, we're going to divide everything by, we look, we're going to change this side here. We can divide everything by either tangent or by one. Don't divide by one, okay? Because when you divide by one, nothing happens, okay? Let's divide everything by tangent. So one divided by tangent, one over tangent, plus Tangent divided by tangent, 1 uh, over tangent minus tangent over tangent. We just took each of these four terms and divided by tangent, 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 tangent. Well, what is 1 over tangent? 1 over tangent is, where is it? Uh, oh, whoops, I put this on here also. Cotangent is also 1 over tangent. I thought I wrote that on there. I apologize. Cotangent is 1 over tangent. So, cotangent plus tangent over tangent is just one. One over tangent is cotangent minus tangent over tangent is one. That's what we want. One, that's a one stepper. That's a one step problem. Again, could we have made everything sines and cosines? Yeah, but there are no sines and cosines, so we don't really want to do that. 45, secant cosecant plus secant over cosecant plus sine over cosine equals, well, we can say we have two cancels. Okay, we're going to change the left-hand side, okay? Change the left-hand side. So let's do this, okay? Secant is 1 over cosine. So 1 over cosine over cosecant is 1 over sine. Plus, sine over cosine is tangent. Now, you might wonder, why do we change between tangents? We like sines and cosines, but we want to make them into tangents. I, I want that to be a tangent here. Okay, so one, a fraction divided by a fraction is the same as the fraction times the fraction flipped. So that's the same as one over cosine, that was terrible, times sine over cosine. This divided by this is this times that flipped. One times sine is sine over, oops, not sine over, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 1 over cosine divided by 1 over sine is 1 over cosine times sine over 1. I apologize, that should be sine over 1. 1 times sine is sine, cosine times 1 is cosine, plus tangent. Sine over cosine is tangent. Tangent plus tangent is two tangents. And that's what we wanted, just two tangents. Okay, sorry about that, I messed up there. Okay, just a few more and we'll be done with this video for today. Again, I'm just going to make this at least at least two videos, maybe three videos, trying to get through the whole front of this worksheet on this video, or whatever 
the thing freezes up and kicks me off. One plus sign, one minus sign. Two poles, cosecant plus one, and cosecant minus one. This is no different than number 43. It's the same one. The skeletons are the same. Two terms, two terms, two terms, two terms, two terms, plus minus, plus minus. Um, I'm going to change the left side. It doesn't, what the heck, I'll change the right side. It really doesn't matter, okay? Let's change the right side. So I'm going to divide everything by either cosecant or one. We already said don't divide by cosecant, or don't divide by one, because nothing happens. So I divide by cosecant. So cosecant, divide by cosecant, plus one over cosecant, cosecant over cosecant, minus one over cosecant. Cosecant divided by cosecant is 1, plus 1 over cosecant is, uh, shh, well, no, no, don't do this, sine is, if cosecant is 1 over sine, sine is 1 over cosecant. So that's sine, 1 minus sine, and that's what we wanted. 49. Okay, 1 minus sine over cosine. Plus cosine over one minus sine equals what? Two secant. Okay, I'm going to change the left side, obviously, because there's a whole lot more stuff over there. Uh, everything sines and cosines. I can't use any of these square ones. There's no squares yet. The only thing I can think of right now is this. Now, be careful. You might be thinking, can't we cancel stuff? We can if we're timesing, but we're not timesing. We're adding, okay? Uh, the only thing I can think of right now is getting a common denominator. Okay, let's get a common denominator. My denominator is a cosine and one minus sine. My common denominator is cosine times one minus sine plus cosine one minus sine. Okay, to turn cosine into cosine one minus sine, we have to times this by one minus sine. And we need to FOIL this out. First is one times one is one. My outer is 1 times negative sine is negative sine. My inners are also a negative sine. A negative sine and a negative sine is a negative two sines. My last, negative sine times negative sine, positive sine squared. Turn 1 minus sine into cosine 1 minus sine. We times by cosine. Let's times this by cosine. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Okay? This problem's almost done, I think. Let me think here. Uh, yeah, we're almost there. Okay, but now I have a common denominator, so if I, if I wanted to, I could write this all over one fraction. I'm not going to do that. I've already written enough. Just picture this as all over cosine 1 minus sine. Well, sine squared plus cosine squared, this is 1. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So we have 1, and 1 is 2 minus 2 sine over cosine 1 minus sine. Okay, I'm going to move this up here. Well, I'm going to do something though. Now, I could do something to the top. I could factor this. I could factor out a 2. So 2 times 1 minus 2 times sine is 2 sine over cosine 1 minus sine. Cosine 1 minus sine equals Two secant, we haven't touched that side, okay? Why would I factor that? I could cancel these, we're almost there, okay? So, two over cosine equals two secant, okay? Cosine, I should have written this down also. If, where are we? Secant is one over cosine, cosine is one over secant. They're reciprocals, okay? So cosine is one over secant, so two over one over secant, and 2 over this is 2 times that flip. So 2 times secant over 1. And 2 times secant over 1 is 2 secant. That was a little tougher one. Okay, that was a little tougher. They're not going to get that much tougher than that. Okay? The more you do these, the better you get at them. Okay? And watching me is great, but you're going to learn these the best by working through these on your own. Okay, just a few more. 51, that's 49, 51, 53. Okay, three more to go. 51, so we have sine over sine minus cosine equals 1 over uh, 1 minus cotangent. Oops, 
Okay. This is a, this is a one stepper. If you can see it, it's a one stepper. My skeletons are the same. We have one over two terms, one over two terms, minus in between them, okay? I'm going to change this side into this side, okay? So I'm going to divide everything by sine and divide everything by cosine, okay? Well, I want this to turn into a one. If I divide this by cosine, sine over cosine is tangent. We don't want that, okay? Oh, are we still going, I hope? All right. We want one, so let's divide by sine. Divide by sine, because sine divided by sine is one. Divide this by sine, divide this by sine. We just divided everything by sine. Sine over sine is one, sine over sine is one, cosine over sine is cotangent. That's what we wanted. Okay, two more to go. 53. Okay, one minus sine, one plus sine. Secant minus tangent squared. Okay. I'll be honest with you guys. This is one I'm not really sure about. I might, I, I think I'm going to change the right hand side. I think I'm going to, gosh, do I want to do that or not? I'm not sure which side would be better or worse to uh, change. Um, I'm going to change the right hand side. That might not be a good idea. We'll see, okay? So, Here's what I could do. I could write this twice and FOIL it out, or I could change everything to sines and cosines. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change everything to sines and cosines. Secant is 1 over cosine minus tangent is sine over cosine squared. I'm going to erase and remove this up here because this is going to run out of room really, really fast. So we have 1 minus sine over 1 plus sine. That's the side we're not changing equals. Now, I have this fraction minus a fraction. We already have a common denominator, so I'm just going to write it over one denominator. So that's the same as 1 minus sine, all of that, over cosine squared. Okay. Now, let's do this. Let's go ahead and FOIL this out. 1 minus sine over cosine times itself, because we're squaring it, 1 minus sine over cosine. Oh, this is a good, I see it. We're, I want, we're, we're going the right way here. Thought I might uh, lead you down the wrong path. We're, we're good. Okay, so let's FOIL this out. We have 1. My outers are negative sine. My inners are negative sine. That's a negative 2 sine. My last is positive sine squared. Oh, wait a minute, though. I don't think we want to do that. Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> That's, that's not long, but I would suggest this. Leave this as 1 minus sine squared over sine, cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Okay? Leave it like that. If we FOIL this out, it's just going to get messier. Okay? It's going to get messier. So, we did multiply these out. I'm just going to leave this as 1 minus sine squared. Okay? Well, how much money does Chuck have? Chuck has a dollar take away Steve. Now, we cannot cancel anything in here because this is all of it squared. This is only the sine that's being squared. But this is a difference of two squares. So we have 1 minus sine. So I'm going to write that as 1 minus sine times 1 minus sine. It might be a little bit easier to see here in a second. And that's 1 squared and sine squared. So it's 1 plus sine, difference of squares, 1 minus sine. And we're there. We could cross off these two things. We have 1 minus sine over 1 plus sine. That one's a really simple one to go down the wrong path, okay? If you start working on these, I haven't said this yet, if you start working on these and it gets messier and messier and messier, you probably aren't picking the most efficient way, okay? You might want to start look, start over and look back at where you were. Okay, what number was that? Uh, oh, is that the right shape? That was number 53, yep. Yeah, we changed the right side. Okay, 55, last one. I'm going to do for this video for the day. Cosine over 1 minus tangent plus sine over 1 minus cotangent plus sine plus, square, plus sine. Okay, I'm going to definitely change the left hand side. Okay, definitely going to change the left. Okay, so um, I'm going to make everything sines and cosines. So cosine over 1 minus tangent is sine over cosine plus sine over 1 minus cotangent is 
cosine over sine. Okay. Now I'm going to do this also. I'm going to get a common denominator on bottom here. Okay. One is the same as one over one, which is also the same as cosine over cosine. That way we have a common denominator. And one, I'm going to make this sine over sine. That way we have common denominators. So we have cosine over, since we have a common denominator here, I can do cosine minus sine over cosine plus sine over, since we have a common denominator here, we can do sine minus cosine over sine equals sine plus cosine. Okay, this divided by this is the same as this times that flip. So cosine times cosine over cosine minus sine plus this divided by this is this times that flip. So sine times sine over sine minus cosine. Okay, that's cosine over one and sine over one. Yeah, that's terrible to take negative one. So cosine times cosine is cosine squared over one times cosine minus sine is cosine minus sine plus sine times sine is sine squared over one times sine minus cosine is sine minus cosine. Now be careful here. You might say, well, sine squared plus cosine squared is one. But we're not allowed to add these because the denominators are not the same. They're not the same, okay? But there is a relationship. They're not the same. They're opposites. They're opposites. The opposite of sine take away cosine is cosine take away sine. So what I'm going to do is this. If I want to oppositize this, it turns into that, or vice versa, okay? I'm going to oppositize this, okay? I'm going to change this to the opposite. I've got to change that to the opposite. Whatever I do to the bottom, I can do to the top. So the opposite of cosine minus sine is sine minus cosine, and make that the opposite. Make it negative cosine squared. Now we have a common denominator, okay? Now we have a common denominator. Now, can I make this one? No, because it's not sine squared plus cosine squared. It's sine squared minus cosine squared. So let's write that down. Sine squared times cosine squared over sine minus cosine. We're almost done with this one. We need some room up here. Okay. So I just wrote sine squared minus cosine squared over sine minus cosine equals Right, sine plus cosine. Okay. Any thoughts on what we can do now? We got one more step and we're there. Think about it for a second. Pause this if you have to. See if you can figure out what you think we're going to do next. Okay, time's up. That's the difference of squares. That's sine squared. That's cosine squared. It's minus. So it's sine plus cosine times sine minus cosine over sine minus cosine. These cancel. We're left with sine plus cosine equals sine plus cosine. If you're sitting here right now going, oh my gosh, I, I'm not going to get these. We typically spend three weeks on these. Three weeks. I've spent about an hour on this right now, okay? I really hope you didn't watch all of this hour all at once, okay? I would hope that you would you know, watch it maybe 10 or 15 minutes at a time, try a few problems and so forth, okay? Um, I would hope what I'm going to do is in about, about a week or so, I'm going to put the rest of the video on here, okay? Put questions 57 through 80, 89 or whatever I said it was, okay? And just try these a few each day, okay? The more you do them, it will get better, okay? Almost everybody struggles with these the first few times they do them, okay? So, also, we will hit question number 21 eventually. I forgot about that. So I just have to remember next time we do our video. So, again, don't get frustrated. It's going to take you probably three, four, five days in order to start getting these down a little bit, okay? And one thing we don't have is usually I have you working in partners. Unless you get together, I don't know how you're going to do that. So, I mean, just watch this video several times if you have to. Email me if you have questions over some of these, okay? You, can, you guys can do it. I have faith in you, okay? All right, hope to see you guys soon. Stay healthy.